today on Styrene Haven Models. Oh yeah, who can't resist building a B-17? Natural metal finish too. All right, now we're talking. Oh man, this is getting good. Let's get into it. I was gifted this 172 scale Airfix B-17G model by a fellow modeler not that long ago. Being a new tool kit, I was really excited to get cracking on this one. The same modeler that gifted me this kit told me I should build it as the Warbird Chucky, and so that's what I did. Because this is a 172 scale model, I decided not to go crazy on the interior and just keep it simple. I just stuck with the standard colors and didn't even bother to weather it or add any extra detail. I was building this B-17 all closed up, so once it's completed, you'd only be able to see through tiny little clear plastic windows and much of it will be hidden away. Being a new tool, this kit went together great. There was absolutely no fit issues and everything went according to the instructions. Like any model, I did have to deal with the gaps and seams and there were a couple steps here and there that I had to take care of. Using my tried and true process of perfect plastic putty and super glue, I was able to take care of all the seams and gaps and steps throughout the model as this was going to be finished in natural metal finish and I had to make sure all of this was perfect and smooth. You can watch my other video linked in the description where I actually break down the process of how I fill all the gaps and seams. I did have to apply primer both before, during, and after the gap filling process as I needed to make sure these gaps and seams were completely filled and disappeared as natural metal finish is very unforgiving. Check out my other video linked in the description where I break down the process of priming this model so I can see all the gaps and seams that I'm going to have to deal with. I couldn't forget all the small parts and I made sure to clean all those up and prime them as well. Things were moving right along, but the next phase was going to be the trickiest. Oh boy, natural metal finish. It was make or break time. Not one to take any chances, I pulled out my trusty paint mule and made sure to test every stage of the natural metal finish process as I went through it on the B-17. The first step, of course, to get the most reflectivity out of the natural metal finish is to put down a nice, smooth, glossy black base coat. My favorite paint for this is Tamiya Gloss Black X1. Mixed approximately 50-50 with Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner, I get a nice smooth finish, something that I don't have to bother too much with other than just sanding out a little bit of trash here and there. Making sure again not to forget all the small parts that were also going to be natural metal finish, I hit those as well. With the gloss black nice and dry and no seams or gaps to be found, it was ready to apply the natural metal finish. Using a method I accidentally stumbled upon, the first coat was polished aluminum. Oh yeah, shiny. Nothing like a nice shiny finish to make the model pop and show all the fine recessed detail molded into the plastic. Keeping the model on my trusty wire holder, I set it away for a day to let it fully cure even though natural metal finish can cure to the touch within minutes. Because this is such a high shine, I wanted to make sure I could handle it when I had to mask off all the other individual panels. If you're curious to learn more about my natural metal finish process, check the link in the description as I've made a video detailing the step-by-step -step process I took in achieving this finish. After a few sessions at the bench, taking my time to mask off all the individual panels, it was time to go back to the bench and apply the secondary colors. Like usual, I got out my paint mule and tested all the secondary natural metal finish colors on it first just to make sure I liked the shades that I was going to get on the B-17. Using my trusty Sotar Fine Line airbrush, I hit all the individual panels with all the different shades of natural metal finish in my arsenal. To get rid of the ghosting left by the masking tape, I hit the entire model with AK's aluminum. This not only took care of the ghosting, but it toned down all the extreme differences between all the different shades of natural metal finish and made everything blend in nicely while still keeping a nice tonal variation between the panels. Alright, so we're over the hump. Natural metal finish is looking good. Time to do all the other colors. Doing this B-17 as Chucky offered a lot of opportunities to try a lot of different painting techniques. Wing bands, fuselage bands, a big yellow tail. This was going to get interesting. 
I even decided to paint all the major markings on instead of using decals, but we'll get to that in just a minute. With a nice tough coat of all clad clear base, I was able to mask off the model for all the different parts I was going to have to paint that weren't natural metal. I decided to tackle the yellow colors first. I thought I'd be able to spray the yellow over the silver, but later I realized that I was going to have to put on some kind of a brighter undercoat to get the yellow to look right, as it would have taken too many coats of yellow to show up properly over the silver, building up too much paint and creating an edge along the mask line. Yellow can be a tricky color to get right on a model, as you need a good bright undercoat, something like white or even pink, to make the yellow show up properly, since it's such a translucent color. I wanted to take care of all the yellow areas on the plane all in one sitting, so of course I had to mask everything off, including the fuselage bands. And you guessed it, I did a separate video on how I tackled the fuselage bands to get them nice, even, and straight. You can check out the link in the description. With the yellow looking the part, I sealed it all in with another coat of the all clad clear base, and now it was time to start moving on to the other markings like the insignia and the wing bands. And as mentioned, I ditched the decals of all the major markings and masked everything out, using my vinyl cutter to cut masks to make all the insignia and large letters, including the tail letters, as well as the fuselage letters. Scanning in the decal sheet into my design software and using it as a general template, I was able to design and size all the masks that I was going to have to use on the B-17. I also had some other spare decal sheets that I used to try to replicate the wing bands and the big W on the tail. With the artwork ready to go, I loaded my vinyl cutter with the Tamiya masking sheet and put it to work. After just a couple minutes of cutting, I had a full sheet of masks to replace all the decals. Using some translucent vinyl, I was able to place the masks in all the appropriate areas on the model and get it ready for paint. Then it was just a matter of applying the paint and repeating the process of putting in the different sections of the different parts of the mask into all the areas to get all the painted markings done. Nope. I didn't leave you hanging. I did a complete detailed video on how this process works and how easy it is for you to be able to do the exact same thing. And I got you covered with a link in the description. All that was left now was the anti-glare panels and the wing locks. And I just used some good old fashioned masking tape to mask all these areas out. My favorite color for wing locks and for tires is Tamiya's NATO Black. Since it's not a solid black, it gives a nice hue between being kind of a charcoal with a little tiny bit of brown in it, making it look more rubbery. I had to do a little bit of experimenting to get the colors right for the anti-glare areas of the B-17. At first, I used a color that ended up being too dark and a little bit too brown. So instead of trying to have to correct that, I used that as a pre-shading and then put on a, the correct color over it and was able to do some nice shading and fading effects by going over the incorrect color from the first pass. The kit decals did not include the Warbird Chucky, so I had to print a few decals to get that paint scheme correct. These decals included Chucky itself as the nose art and the tail numbers as my final cutter just couldn't quite cut those tail numbers out of masking tape, so I ended up having to print that as a decal. After doing some test prints on regular paper and checking my sizes and making sure that everything was correct, I was able to print on regular decal paper and then apply a gloss lacquer clear coat to seal in the ink and finally apply those decals onto the model itself. Of course, that is a bit of an oversimplified description of the process of printing and designing your own decals. So did I make a video detailing the entire process showing you how to print your own decals with the standard inkjet printer? You know I did, and you can find the link in the description. With the printed decals properly placed, whew, say that three times fast, it was time to move on to some of the smaller stencil decals. I grabbed these from the kit decals and applied them according to the instructions. The last part I had to do before sealing everything in 
was to mask off and hit the wheel wells with interior color zinc chromate to finish off the entire B17 non-metallic colors. Nothing quite as satisfying as peeling off the masking tape and getting a nice, clean, smooth edge. With all the markings done on the B17, both big and small, it was time to go back to the paint booth and seal everything in with a final coat of clear base. And that's where I'm going to have to leave you for part one of the B17 build. In the next part of this build series, I'm going to get into the weathering of this aircraft. Please leave any thoughts or questions in the comments about this build, as I'm always happy to help out a fellow modeler. I've provided links in the description of all the products used in this video. You can support my channel by clicking on any of those product links, and if you make a purchase, I get paid a small commission at no cost to you, so thank you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button while you're at it. This will keep you up to date of all my newest content. Be sure to check out some of my other videos, including a how-to on how to paint nose and tail checkers. Thanks for watching.